Hello everyone, welcome back to the Plain Guy with me, the Plain Guy. You are all very warm and welcome back to the channel, whether you are new or a returning subscriber, and a 100,000 welcomes to all you absolutely gorgeous and very, very sexy people. With winter upon us, it's not only time to get your coats on, but it's also time to get those de-icing trucks out of the sheds and back into service, and this will be the focus of today's video, as we are going to be having a look at de-icing operations in FSX and P3D. Firstly, what is ice and why we need to be protected from it? Well, ice can be a very dangerous thing for aircraft. A number of planes have unfortunately crashed as a result of ice contamination, such as Air Florida Flight 90 in 1982, US Air Flight 405 in 1992, and American Eagle Flight 4184 in 1994. The reason why ice and aircraft don't mix is down to a number of things. Firstly, it can stick to the leading edge of a wing and if so will disrupt the airflow, reducing lift up to 30%. Secondly, all ice is solid water, so therefore it has a mass, so ice can impact on your performance as well. In fact, ice can increase drag by up to 40%. Also, if big chunks of ice go down the engine this can also cause damage as well so this is why a lot of planes have nacelle anti-icing capabilities Port ice and planes is much like Theresa May and the UK government they simply just don't go together now generally on flight simulator the effects of icing are not simulated however I do believe aircraft like the FS Labs A320 do model visually some ice build up whether it does more than this I'm honestly not sure but nevertheless, de-icing is still very important, and for realism, I would also suggest de-icing when needed. Okay, so you've decided to go off and get de-iced, but an important thing we need to discuss is what type of de-icing treatment should I get? Now, generally speaking, de-icing fluid is made up of a mixture of glycol and water that is heated, so this can get rid of the ice. But there is a bit more to it than that, as there is different types of fluid you can also get, and this may vary depending on airport and service provider. You have fluid type 1. This is a de-icer only. This means if there is any ice buildup on the aircraft, then this fluid will get rid of it. Fluid type 2. This is made up of fluid type 1 and also an anti-ice solution to stop any further ice from getting stuck on the plane. Fluid type 3. Same as type 2, but this is only used for turboprop aircraft. And finally, you have fluid type 4. Now this is made up of three types of fluid. The first two are the same as the type 2 fluid, but the third is an additional green solution that will increase the fluid's effectiveness by extending its hold over time. Now, just like my wages, this will not last for a long time. Eventually, the effects of icing fluid will wear off, and once again, your aircraft will be subject to ice buildup. To prevent this, hold over times must be observed. This is a maximum time allowed before you will need to be de-iced again. So it's important that you take off as soon as possible after you have been de-iced to prevent this. Now, in regards of the associated time, this will vary depending on ice, weather, conditions, and anti-icing taps. A whole number of things, really. Okay, everyone. So, what you want to do is you want to head on over to Google and type in FAA hold over tables. At which point, you want to then click on the most up-to-date uh, document. For us, this is winter 2019-2020, and you're looking for a PDF with FAA holdover time guidelines. So you want to do is you want to go ahead and click that. And uh, on your third page here, as you can see, it comes up with all the different types of holdover times available. Now, for us, we're going to be using Killfrost ABC, so we'll navigate to that page there. And as you can see here, we've got a few tables. Now today, up at Leeds, we have uh, freezing fog and it's minus five. So minus five, freezing fog. And as you can see there, between 25 and 75% concentration. It's between 25 minutes and one hour 25. And 100 is between half an hour and one hour five minutes. And it is as simple as that. When it comes to the type of fluid that I like to use, uh, for most of my flights, I will load up a cold and dark uh, configuration early in the morning. So I'm simulating that it's the first light of the day. And in which case at this time of year, more or less likely, it may have a little bit of ice on it. So uh, the use of fluid type 1 would get rid of that. 
and depending if there is going to be any ice on the departure I'll use uh, fluid type 2 but then uh, just in case the weather is a little bit bad once we get into the air and I'm a little bit unsure of what uh, de-icer to take then I'll just go with fluid type 4 but then it's entirely up to you uh, what you want to use of course uh, it is not actually uh, simulated so if you do make a mistake then uh, don't worry about ice perfecting your performance so how do you go about being de-iced? Well, there is options available from GSX via their menu when the outside temperature is below four degrees and you will be asked, would you like de-icing treatment upon pushback? Now, I do recommend that you go ahead and you get this de-icing treatment before you call for pushback because oftentimes when I'm at Heathrow, I'll call for pushback, wait for de-icing treatment, and then I won't actually push back until 10 minutes later. So do keep that in mind. Or if you use fly tamper scenery after pushback, you can head on over to the de-icing ramp to get your aircraft sprayed there. Now, some important tips uh, for de-icing. Uh, remember that the aircraft will need to be in a clean config, so make sure you don't have any of your flaps or slats extended. You also want to make sure that your bleeds are off because you do not want that fluid going into your aircon system. And same thing for the outflow valves, they need to be closed. And after you have been de-iced, you can then set your flap slats bleeds as required. But I would also recommend performing the flight control checks after you have been de-iced as well. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching the video. I certainly hope you have enjoyed it and have found it informative. And I really do hope that it's going to help you along the way with uh, de-icing. Of course, do not forget to please leave a like on this video. It is very much appreciated. Secondly to that, make sure you absolutely smash that subscribe button so that way you never miss out on any new videos that do get released on this channel. Of course, I am wanting to do more videos uh, about aviation-related topics in regards of uh, flight simulator, just like this one. So like I say, make sure you do please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon as well so you will be notified as to uh, when that happens. And of course, do not forget that I am now streaming several times a week on Twitch. Uh, my Twitch channel should be coming on screen now for you. So like I say, if you do like uh, flight sim streams make sure you head on over to my channel there but from me the plane guy once again i'd like to thank you very much for watching and i shall see you next time